Let's face it, you enjoy media. It's one of America's favorite pastimes right next to evading taxes, but there's all different forms of media such as movies, TV shows, and even video games is what we're gonna talk about. But how do we enjoy them? Physically or digitally? One of them I actually own. So physical versus digital, easily the best civil war I've ever been part of. Digital games started out as a timed broadcast for both the Sega Channel, which was made by Sega, and the Satellaview, which was made by Nintendo in the early to mid-90s. These were both never released in the States due to poor sales over in both Japan and Europe, but not really offering any sort of interesting gameplay or selection of games, on top of the horrendous load times for the games as well. There were a total of 17 games made for the Sega Channel and a whopping 114 games for the Satellaview. The main issue now with these games is that most of them were lost due to only being broadcast of the games since you actually never owned the physical cartridge, making it really hard to find the actual hubs for these games, and even the ROMs are really hard to find online. Fast forward to the early 2000s, and you have yourself the mainstream era of digital games. The PS3, Wii, and Xbox 360 all had ways to download their new titles straight from their digital storefronts without having to go to a brick and mortar store to purchase a physical copy. The main issue with downloading these games was the terrible download speeds at the time, due to many people having slow internet speeds and games at the time were beginning to be in the high gigabytes, hence why many people still went to physical stores and bought the physical discs since you had all the data on the disc itself. But what makes physical better than digital? For one, you actually get to own the game. When you purchase a game digitally, you're only buying the rights to the game. You don't actually technically own it. Another reason is that you can resell it if you so need to. Digital games you are unable to sell once you have purchased the game. But physical, you can. The price of the physical games may even go up in price. Or down. It just depends. So, there is a huge resell market for physical games. Most of the time, games are cheaper to buy physical rather than digital. When a game usually releases, the price will be around $59.99 for both the physical release and the digital one. But as time goes on, the price tends to drop for the physical release, while the digital price usually stays the same. Some of the main reason physical games are cheaper is due to competition between retailers such as Target and Walmart. Whoever has a cheaper price will get the sales. Digital games, on the other hand, have no real competition, since they're all on the same digital storefront, such as the PlayStation Store and the Xbox Microsoft Store. Some of the downsides to having so many physical games is that the way you need to play them. For instance, I want to play Hitman 3, so I'll need to boot up a PS5 and play the game that way, or use a PS4. But if I want to play a game like Resident Evil Zero on the original hardware, I'll need to hook up my GameCube and use the two discs that you need in order to play the game, as well as hope that my modern TV has AV output. Well, something that's still a modern issue is download speeds, especially with the Xbox Series X and the PS5, and even the Nintendo Switch, so... How about we download a game, and drive out to a game store and buy the exact same game, and see what's faster? So, I'll be purchasing the new Halo game, Halo Infinite, for Xbox Series X, and I'll download the exact same game on my Series X, and, well, I guess let the competition begin. Well, I guess digital games just download faster in the future now. I mean, what do I want to do about a retro game? I mean, I could either emulate it, which is piracy, or maybe just go on Nintendo Switch Online and play a Kirby game or something. 
the main issue with playing these retro games on modern consoles is Switch Online, for example. You have to pay about 20 bucks a month to even access these retro games, which is a very limited selection. And again, the main issue with this is that you do not own the games. You are subscribing to a list like Netflix or HBO Max. You're just basically downloading them to your system to play, and then once that timer is up for your subscription, no games. When you go in to try to find ways to play these retro games nowadays, you either need the physical version of the game, or need to use an emulator and a ROM as well. This is why it's nice to have these games physically, since we can preserve them and play them whenever we'd like. Emulators are perfectly legal by all means, it's the ROMs that are the main issue. Companies like Sony and Nintendo don't want you trying to play these games without paying a hefty price. Really, in the long run, these companies aren't losing anything either way since most retro games are sold in secondhand shops, which is perfectly legal. But, if you attempt to obtain the ROMs online, you are technically stealing from these companies and can get fined, which usually never happens. That's why it's always better to usually go the physical route of things, since it's the legal option. So all in all, you should go the physical route for many reasons. It's cheaper, you get to legally own the game, you can sell it if you want, and it just looks really cool on a shelf. And especially with download times these ages, it's a lot easier just to get a physical disc and pop it in, download the update, than to actually just download the game off the Microsoft Store. Now would you excuse me? I need to go return my copy of Halo Infinite that I bought because, well, I can do that with physical games.